Greetings. Normally when reviewing a pen, uh, before I review the pen, I've had it for a while, I've had a chance to write with it and really establish an opinion on it. This is going to be a little bit different, so we're going to see how this goes. This is the brand new Twisby Go. I just got this pen. I have not even inked it up yet. Um, and we're going to uh, see sort of in uh, quasi real time what my thoughts are on the pen. This is a brand new pen that uh, just hit the market. Um, it's a pretty much all plastic pen, as you can see. Um, it's a light pen. It weighs 17 grams. It's um, not a particularly large pen either. It's just a tiny bit smaller than a Lamy Safari or a Pilot Metropolitan, as you can see. Um, probably one of the main features of this pen is the fact that it is clipless, which normally is not the kind of thing I go for. It does have an interesting little loophole, I guess, to put a lanyard in, but it's a tiny little hole. I'm not really sure how useful that would be. I would have really liked to see a clip, even a cheap sort of mold, clip molded into the plastic would have, would have been, um, would have been uh, useful. Um, the filling mechanism on this is somewhat unique. So it has a, has a pop-off cap with a, what looks to be a nice cap liner. So I'm going to guess that this pen is going to stay um, uh, uh, fresh for a while without drying out. Um, the filling mechanism is, is sort of a spring-loaded piston. So you unscrew this uh, back. It reveals sort of this bare spring. And then the theory is you um, push this down, let it go, and it sucks up ink. We're going to try that out in just a minute. Um, the uh, cap and the tip of the cap and the bulk of the barrel are both in this blue color. It also comes in a gray color, which we'll see in a second. I actually have one of those as well with a little insert, inset red uh, disc with the Twisby logo. And it has the words Twisby Go sort of. Um, almost like in raised lettering, raised into the plastic on the cap. Um, it's a nice long section uh, of uh, sort of a soft plastic and a small, very small nib. Uh, appears to be the same nib that's on the Twisby Echo. And that's a steel nib. This particular one has the stub. Um, that is this one. Um, I'll show you the gray one uh, as we unbox so you can see how it comes packaged. So it sort of has this outer brown cardboard sleeve, a nice little box. There are uh, clear plastic stickers on each end of the box which seal it. I've sliced through those so we can open it. Um, has a label which gives a bunch of product information. Has Twisby on the top of the box. You open it up and there's not a lot in here. You have the pen. This like I said is the gray version. Uh, has this little foam holder to keep it from moving around in the box and a little set of instructions and that's it very basic um, and so if you want to compare the gray and the blue we can get a, a little look here how they how they both look side by side so these are the two colors that this pen is available on at the moment we're going to ink up the blue one so let's see how this cool filling mechanism works. I'm going to be inking it up with Robert Oster Soda Pop Blue, which uh, is a nice blue ink. I've tried this before in other pens, and we'll see how that goes. So we're going to, again, we're doing this on the fly and unrehearsed. So we're going to open the, the back of the pen up. I'm going to stick the pen in. I'm going to push down on the spring-loaded piston. I'm going to let it go. And sure enough, it pretty much filled up. I'm going to give it one more shot, but it's mostly, you probably can't see from the camera, but it's pretty much mostly full. I did give it a second pump, which might not have needed it, but uh, this filling mechanism works pretty pretty well. So um, let's uh, just cap that ink up so it doesn't go anywhere. Let's take a look at how much ink we got. Um, you know, at first glance, uh, let me close this back up so I don't accidentally push it. At first glance, it would seem that, wow, there's an awful lot of wasted space in there with the piston and the spring, etc. But I'm going to say that this is a decent amount of ink in here. I mean, this is, this is not a stingy amount of ink by any means. So I think, uh, 
I think most people are going to be pleased with that incapacity. Um, so the filling mechanism works. We've already gone over all the parts of the pen, etc. I think the only thing that remains now to be seen is how does it write? And let's find that out right now. Okay, what we're writing with here is the Twisby. Go. And this pen has a 1.1 millimeter steel stub nib. So my initial thoughts are this pretty much writing experience from a nib on paper perspective is pretty much exactly what you get with the Echo. So it's a nice, well flowing uh, Twisby stub. It's um, very much the, uh, like I said, the same effect that you would, that, that I get on the Echo. The pen feels good in the hand. I'm using it posted here. It is long enough that you could pretty much get by with it unposted if you really want to, but why not? Why wouldn't you post this? Um, it's a little bit on the thick side, the barrel of the pen itself. The section though tapers down quite a bit. So you could definitely, and it's a nice long section. So I would say you could pretty, you would pretty much be able to find some place on this section that would be comfortable to hold. So I do like it from that perspective. I think the filling mechanism is unique and kind of cool and easy to use one-handed. So that might be an issue for people. If you notice that you just, you, don't, you, you can fill the pen with, you don't have to hold the pen with two hands when you do it like you would with say a normal piston filler, etc. cetera. So um, you could fill it one-handed, which is nice. Uh, like I said, I think this is a pretty decent amount of ink despite, you know, appearances that, uh, that you know, 75% of the barrel seems to be wasted on the mechanism. Um, there is actually a pretty good amount of ink in here. Um, you do have this nice transparent section. It's sort of a frosted soft plastic. So you can kind of see what's going on here. You get to see a little bit of the, it's a dark feed. Might have been a little cooler to have a transparent feed in here uh, given everything else, but you know, you can't have everything. You do get to see a little bit of the ink uh, going through and the ink collecting above the nib before it hits the paper, which is kind of, kind of, um, kind of nice looking. You don't get a great visual on the ink. Uh, in other words, if you had an ink that was a really interesting color because the barrel is tinted, this plastic is frosted, etc. you're not gonna, like if you had a yellow or a green ink, etc. you're not gonna get a fantastic visual on the ink, but um, you do obviously get to see the ink level, which is, which is important uh, as well. Um, so my initial first impression of this pen is actually quite a good one. It's a $20, pen, I'm sorry, it's a $19 pen. Um, so it's a pretty good pen for $19. Um, in, at this price point for this type of pen, um, if you want this type of pen with this type of nib, this is actually a very good uh, deal. If you want a cool piston filled demonstrator and your a hooded nib is something that you might be okay with, I'm still a big fan of the Wingsung 618, which is a few dollars less than this. Um, and I kind of like better, um, mainly to be honest with you, because it has a clip. I'm, I'm really, um, think it's a real shame that this pen doesn't have a clip. I'm actually gonna see if I can dig up uh, some sort of accommodation uh, clip that I could maybe fit on here just to slide on something not something I'm inclined to spend a lot of money on but if I can dig one up for a few bucks it might be worth it because I do like the pen um, and it's just really a shame that it doesn't have a clip um, and this little lanyard loop if somebody can think of a good use for that I'd be love to hear it but I just personally think that's kind of a silly a silly waste um, uh, but other than that I think this is a pretty nice pen. Um, I think they did. A, I think uh, I think they're going to sell a lot of these. That's my prediction. I think this is going to be a popular pen. It's a good price point. Um, it comes nicely packaged. You could give it as a as a stocking stuffer. Uh, would be uh, you know a good use for this. So it's a nice uh, all in all a nice pen. Um, and I think they did a good job with it. I would like to see a version 2.0 of this with a clip. Um, and then you'd, you'd really, that would really be a knock out of the, uh, a home run. So as it is, I'd say this is a ground rule double, um, but uh, it would be uh, at least a triple, if not inside the park home run, if it had a clip at that price. So there you go. Um, 
So that is my view on the Twisby Go. Um, let's now talk a little bit about this ink. So what we're dealing with here is uh, Robert Oster. Soda Pop. Blue. I'm not sure why this is called Soda Pop Blue. Maybe in Australia, there's an association between the color blue and soda. Um, but um, in any case, it's a definitely a, a, a nice color blue. It really pops. It really sa is saturated. Um, it's a kind of an exciting kind of blue, to be honest with you, a, a very unboring type of blue. It's sort of like a, it's sort of like a very saturated turquoise. I guess that's the best way I would call it. It definitely has shading going on here. I think it works really well in like a broad or stub nib like we're seeing here. Um, and I really, really like it. Robert, I'm, I'm hit or miss on Robert Oster ink. Some of the colors are just a little too odd uh for my taste and not terribly practical and usable but some of the other ones like this one i think really really um really work uh really work well um it has nice flow um, um it's a very pretty color um it's uh reasonably well behaved we're not seeing smearing or anything like that um in terms of um bleed through on the paper um it's pretty good there so all in all, it's a pretty decent, pretty good ink. Like all Robert Oster uh, inks, it comes in this 50 milliliter plastic bottle. Um, that's really a very practical um, set of dimensions for fountain pen ink. It's, it's tall and deep and has a nice wide uh, mouth to fill most, uh, most pens. So, uh, you know, again, Robert Oster, they make good inks, but like I said, there's a couple of them. We'll go through some in some subsequent videos that I'm just not crazy about. But this is one of the Robert Osters that I genuinely, genuinely like. So, um, uh, let's. Uh, I hope you like this video. Again, this was one, this was literally the first video I've ever done where I have not used a pen at all prior to uh, prior to uh, uh, shooting the video. So I was flying blind with all of you folks uh, today. So again, I hope you liked it. If you did, please, please subscribe. If you didn't, please give me some feedback and tell me why. In any case, have a good day. Bye-bye.